Okay, well, welcome back to the Geotechnical Laboratory at Dundalk Institute of Technology and today we're going to prepare a sample for the shear box test and conduct the test. So the first material we're going to look at is a coarse sand, it's this material here. It's a large grain size, up to 3 millimeters in grain size. It's uh, uniform, it's all the same size of material and it's frictional, there's going to be a lot of friction on it. So what is the shear box test? Well, the shear box is a small box. This is the bottom half of the box. Inside there is a plate that helps to grip the sample and uh, stop it from shifting inside in the box. And these two halves of the box are located over each other and we'll be prepared to sample in a moment inside the box. But why are there two halves? What we're going to do is slide one half over the top of the other half. The soil inside will shear, it will undergo shear failure. We're going to generate extra shear resistance by putting a weight cap on top of the sample and putting a load on top of the weight cap. So let's have a look at our sample preparation. Here is the bottom half of the shear box. I'm locating the top half above it and we're going to connect the two halves with these retaining screws. And it's important because we'll be taking these out later, don't over tighten them. Next we're going to take our sample material here, this is the coarse sand, and we're going to fill it in the shear box, like so. It's about half full, and as we fill it we'll level it and compact it. This material compacts very easily, so it fills out the box fully. We certainly want to bring the level of the sand above the halfway depth of the box and um, but hopefully not have it too high. We don't want it to spill either. So just compacting it near the very top, putting out the corners and making sure it's as compact as can be. The compaction is important. If we get a variation between samples uh, from one test to another, it can just be the compaction levels will be different between the different samples. So there we have the shear box with the sand filling it up and now we can put on our loading cap, check its level, also check that the edge of the loading cap is not sitting on the edge of the shear box, in other words it's all bearing on the sand. And what we're going to do next is locate the uh, sample in the shear box apparatus which you can see behind me um, uh, in the lab and we'll, we'll take a few minutes then to set that up and start the test progressing. Okay, let's take a look at the shear box appar apparatus. In the first case, uh, looking at the main apparatus, the shear box itself has now been located inside this black uh, container here and the, the black box allows us to conduct a test underwater if we want to, but this is a dry test. The shear box is then connected by this system here to a proving ring. And the proving ring will measure the resistance to sliding of the two halves of the box as they slide over each other. And that resistance will be generated by the friction within our sample of sand. And that will be recorded as a displacement on the proving ring dial gauge, which we can later convert back into a force reading and work out the shear stress. Uh, that's resisting the movement of the sand. So what's stopping it from moving? Well you can see here there's a loading frame now attached to the top of the sample. The loading frame is exerting a vertical stress on the sample and the higher the vertical stress the greater the resistance to sliding. To generate a high load on top of the sample, a high vertical stress, and I'll just turn the camera down here, we have a, a loading arrangement. This is a lever arm loading arrangement, loading arm here, and it multiplies the weight at the end by a factor of 10. So I've put two two kilogram weights on there, that's four kilograms. By the time that is multiplied up through the lever arm and onto our sample up here, that's multiplied by 10 times, so it's equivalent to 40 kilograms on top of the sample. In terms of stress, by the time you divide that 40 kilograms over the area of the sample, convert it to kilonewtons, 
you're at 140 kilonewtons per meter squared approximately. So really, really high vertical stress on a sample. And what we find is that as the vertical stress goes up, as we add more weight to the um, lever arm, and therefore increase the vertical stress on the sample here, that the resistance goes up as well. It's a frictional resistance. It will, the resistance will increase in proportion to the increase in the vertical stress. I just wanted to give you an alternative view of the um, shear box. Here is the box that we prepared with the sample in it. It's, that's the loading plate that we put on top, and this is the lever arm coming down, bringing that 40 kilogram weight onto the top of the loading frame. And when the box is switched on, or when the motor is switched on, the drive shaft here will push the box, the under part here, horizontally. And then all the stopping, uh, resisting that, is the movement between the top and the bottom of the sample within the box. And that's reflected through this aperture here, uh, connected back to our proving ring. The last thing I have to do before starting the test is remove the two holding screws. I'm just taking them out here now while I have it on camera. Uh, that are locking the two halves of the box together. These are just hand tights that are relatively easy to remove. There's one, and I'll take out the other one as well. Okay, I'm about to start the test, and what we're going to see is the shear strength, the shear stress imposed in the sample, being reflected in the movement of the dial gauge, which is currently set to zero. It will increase steadily to a maximum value, and as it reaches the strength of the sand at this vertical stress level, it'll just the increase will stop and just hold the values. It doesn't fail catastrophically, it just holds a peak value. I'm going to start the test now. And the way the test is operating, the ram here is pushing the bottom of the box. And as you can see, I hope you can see, the dial gauge is already turning around there very rapidly. And the vertical stress is applied through here. So it's just gone through 100. Yeah. Divisions on the dial gauge. It's coming up to 200, two full rotations. And as you can see, it's starting to slow down now. So the, the, we're starting to get close to that point where it's reaching the shear resistance, the frictional resistance being generated by the sand grains as they slide over each other. It's really hesitating. It's up around 160 at the moment. Sorry, 260 divisions, I should say. And now it's almost stopped around that 270 mark. It will jump around a bit, it's at its failure point, but it will jump around a bit as the grains of sand slide over each other inside in the shear box. But you can see there, it stopped rapidly increasing. It's reached a kind of a peak. That may creep up very slightly if I left it long enough, but I would record that failure at 270 divisions um, and record that as the failure stress, the horizontal stress at failure. So I've just stopped the uh, shear box, stopped the ram, and we take that reading of 270 divisions, multiply it by the proving ring constant, which will give us a force in kilonewtons being exerted on the sample, and we'll use that to work out the shear stress, the horizontal force over the area of the sample um, for this particular test. And then we'll plot that against the vertical stress. And the vertical stress, as we said before, it's been generated by the weight on the lever arm system. And that is, in this case, that's about four kgs. And it's generating a stress on the sample of approximately 140 kilonewtons per meter squared. That's one run of the test. What will we do next? We will retrieve the sample, reset it, recompact it, and we will change the vertical stress. We may put six kilograms or eight kilograms on the lever arm and run the test again. And in that case, we get a higher value uh, on the dial gauge representing the shear stress.